In this video, we'll look at the characteristics of polynomials in factored form. I wrote down two equations here. The first is, hopefully you can see, a cubic. And the reason I know it's a cubic is this bracket is squared, this bracket just has one x. Can you imagine that if you were to rainbow this out, foil it out, expand it, you would end up with an x cubed. This would have a squared x, and then you would times it here, you get an x cubed. So recognize that this function, its degree, is 3, or it's a cubic. And we can say a little bit more, too. We know its leading coefficient sign, that is, the coefficient in front of the brackets here, is positive. So we know what it's going to look like, a positive-looking cubic. But we have to say a couple more things. We can tell from the brackets here where its zeros are. One of its zeros is going to be at negative 1. That's what make this bracket 0. That's the definition of a 0. If you sub a negative 1 in here, you get a 0. So one of the zeros is negative 1 comma 0. What makes this bracket 0? A 3. So those are your two zeros. But it's worth noting that this 0 is what we call order 2. And that's just simply saying it has an exponent of 2. It's going to have a particular behavior at this 0. You could, you could write down order 1 for this 0, but we're just going to leave it as a default because most zeros, or the default is order 1, or just no exponent here. Why is that important? We'll see when we sketch it. This going to be a rough sketch. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to put a scale, but do put your arrows in your x and y axis. Okay. A degree 3 cubic. Again, I'd watch videos on the cubics. If you don't know what a degree 3 cubic looks like, you should know that it starts down here in quadrant 3 and ends up here in quadrant 1. In particular, this cubic has a 0 at negative 1, so I'll label that here, maybe negative 1. And it has another 0 at 3, so again, don't have to be perfect, but somewhere around here, I need to move this arrow. So we've got our two zeros. Now, here's the important part about that order. This cubic of degree 3 comes up to that zero somehow. We don't have to be accurate. But because it's order 2, right at that zero, order 2 means bounce like a parabola. Just at that zero, make a bounce and come down. We don't know what else it does. Oh, we could find its y-intercept, though, and be more accurate. Why don't we check what its y-intercept is? For the y-intercept, set x equal to zero. So if you set x equal to 0 there, you'd get y equals 0 plus 1 squared times 0 minus 3, which gives you 0 plus 1 is just 1 squared, which is 1. And then 0 minus 3 is just negative 3. So now we know it actually crosses right at negative 3. So we can be a little more accurate. Maybe estimate that's 1, 2. So somewhere down here at negative 3, this thing bounces, comes down to negative 3. And we don't know. At negative 3, does it bounce? Maybe. Or maybe it just crosses right through negative 3. But at some point, it's got to come back up. And for this 0, it goes straight through. It doesn't have an order. So when you come through that 0, just go right through like a line and up forever. So here you have a cubic. That's a positive cubic. It's of degree 3. We found its zeros and we took into account its order at this 0. And we drew on the y-intercept for good measure. And we graphed this polynomial in factored form. Let's do this one. Notice this one has a cube on this 0. So the same sort of, sort of thinking is going to apply. Let's start again and check the degree. The degree, if you expanded this, you'd get an x cubed, but then you times it by x. In other words, this is degree 4. There would be a total, the biggest exponent, you'd end up when you rainbowed or expanded this would be x to the power of 4, so the degree is 4. Once again, the leading coefficient, there's just a 1 here, which is positive. So we say the leading coefficient sine, I should just write leading coefficient, I'll write leading coefficient sine is positive. And again, we'll identify the zeros. The zeros are at negative 2, that makes this bracket 0, and positive 1, that makes the second bracket 0. But notice that this bracket is an order 3 bracket. That is, it's going to behave close to that 0, like a cubic. Let's take a look. We've got degree 4, so it's going to be a quartic. Again, I recommend watching a video on quartics if you don't know what their shape looks like. A degree 4 
positive quartic will end up going like this, going like this. But this quartic in particular has a zero at negative two, maybe around here, and positive one. Why don't we get the y-intercept now just to see for the y-intercept, set x equal to zero. So y is gonna be zero plus two cubed, zero take away one, which equals, you get two cubed here, which you could solve, or I'll do an extra step, two cubed times negative one. That's gonna be two to the power of three. You can use your calculator, but it's eight times negative one is negative eight. So I need to extend my graph here if I wanna be at least somewhat accurate with the scale. So somewhere down here, let's say approximately down here. Again, it's a sketch, you don't have to be super accurate. There's the y-intercept. Okay, let's make this zero happen. Start like a quartic in quadric, a positive quart quartic starts in quadrant two, comes down to this zero here, but watch what happens. It has to behave like a cubic at that zero. So as you get close, you kind of curve in level out and then start to curve down again. If you just zoomed in right here, you'd see this cubic looking shape around that zero. That's what order three means. Now we've got to get down to that y-intercept and then come back really quick because we got to get up to that zero of one. And erase this arrow here. It didn't turn out to be too accurate, but it helped me, reminded me to come back up. And now I've drawn another polynomial in factored form, this time a quartic that was positive with an order three zero.